In the past few videos I've done plenty of beta wanderer analyses, ranging from team damage calcs to weapon damage analysis, to provide you with helpful info. Now that he's about to release, and the pre-release theory crafting process is about to come to an end, I can make a full guide about him where I'll go through his whole kit, preferred teams, weapons, and artifacts. First of all, Wanderer at Constellation Zero is a sustained Anemo DPS, much like Xiao, meaning he doesn't rely on big instantaneous nukes to do most of his damage, rather his damage is almost equally distributed throughout his whole damage rotation, which is usually filled by his elemental skill stance. That said, let's start from the beginning, namely his normal and charged attacks. Wanderer's normal attacks are rather common when compared to other Catalyst users, as he has a typical string of three normal attacks in his kit. His multipliers are above average, and that's really apparent when he's compared to another Catalyst damage dealer such as Klee. He boasts higher multipliers than her across the board while attacking faster as well in his base state. His elemental skill makes him enter a floating state and multiplies his normal and charged attacks multipliers by a fixed amount. This shouldn't be confused with something like Zhao's damage buffs he gets from his elemental burst, as this is a direct increase of his multipliers, which is better in general as it's something that scales incredibly well with external stat buffs. This state has a limited duration based on a gauge, which decreases faster if Wanderer dashes or goes higher in the air through the jump button. Excluding these two options, Wanderer's elemental skill state generally lasts around 10 seconds, with a measly cooldown of 6 seconds. Moreover, his elemental skill is tied to his two ascension passives. In fact, Wanderer's Ascension 1 passive grants him two buffs depending on the elements he comes in contact with during his skill activation. This even works with statuses such as Bennett's self-inflicting pyro application on elemental burst, or objects such as Xiangling's Guba, meaning it shouldn't be too hard to get two of those four buffs on specific teams, but this will be explored later. His second Ascension passive makes his dashes deal a Nemo damage to opponents, granted he has his descent state loaded, which he can do through normal attacks. Dashes done while he's in the descent state won't consume his gauge points, which is nice since it potentially allows him to save the usage of this special dash for when he has to dodge attacks. His elemental burst is rather straightforward. It's an AOE multi-hit attack that deals a Nemo damage, and prematurely ends his elemental skill state on use. For this reason, it's something that's generally meant to use at the end of his rotation. As I mentioned earlier, Wanderer is more of a sustained damage dealer at C0, meaning his elemental burst isn't a crucial part of his damage per rotation. Let's talk about his rotation now. As I said, his elemental skill has a 10 seconds duration excluding things like the Hydro buff from his passive, and during that time span his best combos appear to be quite variable at the moment since it depends on how much attack speed he gets on a given team. I'll start by addressing the simplest thing, taking advantage of the dash damage from his passive at each proc is a slight damage loss compared to his traditional combos, as he generally gets to do more damage by just spamming his attacks relentlessly. This doesn't mean it's a useless passive since as I said earlier, it allows him to use a free dash in terms of gauge points. For this reason, see his dash passive as a way to lose less damage when dashing compared to other characters, something that is still quite the luxury. Speaking about his combos, his charged attack is quite valuable in terms of damage per frame, as it's faster than his third normal attack while having a higher multiplier. For this reason, at low attack speed N2C is a pretty good option for his damage. However, the more you amass attack speed buffs, the more his normal attacks become valuable because most of his attack speed buff options solely buff normal attack speed, meaning that if you run a couple of those, normal attack spam combos will surpass charged attack options. Considering he has to use the burst at the end of these combos, that brings his overall rotation duration up to 12 seconds. Generally, on some teams I've calculated, he gets some wiggle room to stay a bit longer on the field, allowing him to use an extra charged attack outside of his elemental skill state, which never hurts. Speaking about his artifacts, the new Chronicle set is clearly the best option for him in most scenarios, pretty much every time except when he holds the Viridescent Veneerer in a driver role. 
However, since it's a new set, it might be tough for you to get good stats on it for a while, so I made a comparison between it and other sets, assuming you have 5 better crit substats on other options, which makes things a lot closer. While using Shimenawa you won't be able to use Wanderer's Elemental Burst every rotation, but it's not a huge deal. The point is, don't rush to equip the new set as soon as you get 4 mediocre pieces of it, as you probably have better options laying around in your box. Regarding his weapon selections, which I already addressed in another video, there are differences depending on whether or not there are big attack buffs on his team, or Yunjin, whose buffs don't scale with attack at all. Long story short, his signature weapon is always the best, while Lost Prayer is a consistently great alternative. If you don't use Bennett, Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust also become reliable options, otherwise, Solar Pearl, Widsith, Kagura can all be used if you lack better weapons. Solar Pearl is penalized by the fact its normal and charged attack buff will last just 6 seconds per rotation, as it'll only proc once you active Wanderer's E. Speaking about his constellations, the big prizes are his C2 and his C6, both being substantial damage increases for his kit. Meanwhile, other constellations are just not that great, as his elemental skill and burst talents aren't his main priority, the C4 really depends on what buffs he has already absorbed in the team he's being used, and the C1 is just a small damage increase overall. In a different video of mine, which I recommend you to check out, I concluded that going for Wanderer C1 with the assumption you also get C6 Farazan, has similar value as getting his signature weapon, while C2 plus C6 Farazan is the real jackpot for Wanderer over his signature weapon. Let's talk about his possible team options now, something that I've already addressed in a separate video I made, but which I'll expand here. To summarize some of the things I said in that video, an important part of Wanderer's team building is how to take advantage of the buffs he gets from his Ascension 1 passive. Pyro and Cryo are the strongest buffs, as they're big stat increases which maximize the damage Wanderer can deal in his rotations. Meanwhile, Hydro is penalized by the fact that it essentially tries to replicate that stat increase effect through a rotation extension, which often causes him to desync with external buffs such as Bennett's burst by 1 or 2 seconds, meaning it's not necessarily great. The Electro buff is just not that useful in general, as he doesn't rely on his burst at all to do most of his damage as I've explained earlier. In basically every good Wanderer team, you'll either want to have at least one between Farazan and Bennett, or both of them, as they just provide a lot of good things for him that are hard to replace by a specific unit. Granted, this is more true with Farazan C6 rather than C0, since at that point she gains substantial energy generation and additional 40% crit damage supportive buff, which allows her to become the single best support for Wanderer. Without that constellation level, you likely won't be able to use Wanderer's burst every rotation, which while not a huge deal, it's still a significant damage loss. Bennett is arguably just as useful as C6 Farazan, since he provides Wanderer high buffs through his elemental burst, he's a great healing option, and also as I said earlier, his self-inflicting pyro application counts as an element for Wanderer's passive, meaning you can easily build a team that will allow Wanderer to get two buffs from the passive if you have Bennett. Starting from there, there are plenty of teams that rank high for Wanderer, with Yunjin and Jin C4 being incredible options if you have access to a high investment Wanderer, meaning if you also have his signature weapon for example since in that scenario, loading the team with buffs for Wanderer is extremely valuable and it results in better single target damage performance than all other teams. The smaller the investment you have on Wanderer, the more other options with more sub DPS gain value, all the way down to Viridis and Venera Wanderer team compositions, which don't perform badly at all if compared to the rest of the game, and not just other Wanderer teams. Teams with Cryo units in them rank highly because of how strong the combination of Pyro and Cryo buffs are for Wanderer, while teams with Hydro units hang in there because of how strong units like Yelan and Xingqiu can be. In general, the rule is that without Farazan C6, Hypercarry setups fall behind some others, and they become much closer to the Viridis and Venera Wanderer compositions. In terms of overall performance, Wanderer is without a doubt a strong character. 
While it's undeniable that he relies on several expensive stuff to reach his maximum potential, such as C6 Farazan, at the bare minimum he still performs quite well, although in teams where he's the Viridis and Venera driver, he finds the competition of characters like Sucrose, who is rock solid in that role. If some of you were wondering how he stacks up to Xiao, the other Anemo hyper carry, it looks like he's straight up superior in terms of single target damage, and by a large amount. Whether you're looking for a strong meta character or somebody who's fun to use, Wanderer seems to be up for the challenge, and he'll reward your investment regardless of how big it is, as he's decent at low investment and potentially amazing at high investment. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments, and if you've enjoyed it, put a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.